Welcome to Shop Talks, which is a production of Impressions here, the show and the magazine, and the Ink Kitchen, which is a YouTube channel and a blog, which has free information. We got our sponsors, Alpha Broder, Stalls, and Howard Transfers, Los Angeles Apparel, Hirsch, and Lane 7 that make this free and possible for all of you. We have today uh, three gentlemen here, Zach, John, and Adam from Textile, their line called Fairweather Johnson. Um, if you saw on the schedule, there was supposed to be Johan from Caesar. He uh, could not make it to the show for good reasons, I'll just say. And um, so we're going to talk today about some uh, unusual approaches that uh, this company has towards uh, sustainability. Uh, I think taking a different approach than other folks. So I um, wanted to just start by saying basically what your process is. What, of what you're doing, you know, with your shirts. Yeah, Zach, so what you can we're, start. Sorry. Well, eat the mic. What we're trying to do is bring a sustainable apparel collection to this market that is private labelable um, and tells a good story. But at the end of the day, it's about being a fan of the earth. So I'll let Zach kind of explain the technical process to it, but it the garment itself and the way that it's processed to be recycled is very different in the marketplace. Think cotton versus polyester. So well, uh, I'll simplify this, the, the process of recycling. You guys know there's a lot of waste that accumulates all over the place. We get to gather all the apparel waste, use clothing, cut bits. We get to chop them up convert this entire chop bits into fiber, spin them into yarn, get the yarn knitted, and back into a garment. So, so this we, is cotton, not to be clear? It's cotton polyester. It's cotton polyester. So then the apparel that we chop up is already blended. So it has a blend of cotton, it could have a blend of polyester. So we chop up apparel, we gin the, the, the chopped uh, waste or the scrap that we call it. We test it for the content, we spin it back into yarn, and come about with a composition. And that's how we get our blend. Which is pretty amazing, because I know that the mixed blends are really what's difficult to, to otherwise to recycle, right? That's right. Traditionally was like, if it was a cotton poly garment, you can't recycle it, right? That's Just right. Normally. Correct. Through the blending process, we get it to be about a 55 cotton, 45 polyester. Um, and that comes with the segregation of the color and the, bot, uh, the blending at the ginning stage. All right, so I think that's pretty clear what you're, yeah, so there you go, chopped So bits. this is the chopped waste. Garments are chopped up. This is the form of waste. And then from this. That really doesn't look like a t-shirt. <laughs> I mean, it could be any form of fabric, woven, knit, non-woven fabric. Right. And here comes the ginned fiber that's spun into yarn again. And that's where the t-shirt comes from. So if you walk up to our stall at, a, at booth 860, you could have a look at all the colors that we have and that we have made from recycled fiber. So you're not dyeing them, you're taking actually no, colored no, fabric. No That's kind of a very unique approach, right? Correct, there's no dyeing. We've got eight colors in uh, the core palette, collegiate palette, and uh, 15 in resort. And these are all because you took a mix of colored g fabric and made more colored fabric out of that color, exactly. not dyed, dyed it, right? Correct. Which is very unique, I think. Across 12 silhouettes. <laughs> Ambitious so, bastards, yeah. aren't you? So not only are we doing basic t-shirts, you can tell we look like a barbershop quartet, um, but these are sweaters, uh, bird's eye sweaters. We do fleece, uh, as well as yarn dye stripes, and beanies, so chunky beanies, uh, skull caps. So I was kind of intrigued by what you're doing because I've worked with a lot of people that are trying to do the right thing. A lot of time they are what I call do-gooders trying to get into the textile business. I mean, very well-intentioned, but the problem is it's such a complicated business that 
just good intentions will not take you very far. You guys are more like veterans of the textile yeah. industry now trying to do something good. Mm -hmm. but is that fair to That's say? Right. I don't know how to do anything else, Rick. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> um, so the problem I've seen with a lot of brands is that they're trying to put out something that's a little more ethical is yeah. that they can't um, they can't sustain it like either you can't buy a big quantity or you know the things don't match up or you can't put it in your store because next month you can't get it yeah. you guys yeah. seem like this is like a serious enterprise yeah. not a little uh, well, not a little kind of a I'll, I'll talk to this project the scalability is based on the t-shirts you buy from anywhere so your most used shirt is going to be black so that's our most producible shirt because you're going to have the most black wastage so the colors that we show we're comfortable that we have scalability in um, you get into a crazy color it takes us time to blend it find it and put it together so. you're not studying cotton future so no <laughs> Right? I mean, you're, you're not, I don't think you're ever going to use that excuse of the no. supply chain of, no. uh, or that, uh, you know, was hot in Arizona and there was no cotton, right? That's right. So there are advantages to of what you're doing, I guess, right? Exactly. So how did you come across this? I mean, this seems like a very different approach. Like, usually people are, are recycling some raw material. I mean, it's always the damn soda bottle that you know how many soda bottles are in the shirt or something this is like very different from that the factory which zach runs the factory has always been moving in this direction so that all production at the factory will be completely sustainable uh, that was the goal of the factory then through development we showed it pre-covid to target and other customers uh, covid kind of slowed down the development and we've picked it up since then so it's been in work for a while you have other sustainable aspects of your production, right? Don't you have some solar or wind power or something at the factory as well, right? Well, the most uh, important aspect of production is to save energy. So we utilize a lot of solar energy through our entire production process. So we have access to about 3.4 megahertz of solar uh, power production where we run our factory. That's one. We save a lot of uh, energy. We conserve energy because we have a lot of vertical gardens in our factory. So we have less heating. We use a very high-tech air conditioning system which runs on uh, electromagnets. So there's no lubrication in our chiller plants which use, uses very less electricity to run. So we save power over there. So it can run on solar power, so we save uh, energy, we conserve energy there. The entire water that's used to wash t-shirts, wash uh, sweaters is recycled and is recycled again and again. So there's minimum sludge and there's complete, almost 99% of the water is recycled and reused. So there we conserve, we save. So this is how we manage and this is how we sustain else it's, it's quite impossible to ride into the future. So how long have you been doing this? What's, how long? When did this project start? Mm, about 10 o'clock this morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been in plan for a while, but this is truly the launch of Fairweather Johnson. So. Right, so uh, do you have a hard time explaining what it is you do? Uh, you, you know what I mean, sometimes, I mean, I guess that's why everybody says all that stupid stuff about the soda bottles. You know, it's like, that. Th th this is not a simple thing to explain, I don't think, right? No. Most people don't understand the t-shirt is not dyed. It's, uh, I think the most important thing to understand is how much water this saves mm -hmm. uh, in the, the refiber process. I mean, Zach, how would you quantify how much water this saves per garment by not re-dyeing it? It's, it's a lot of water. It's a huge quantum of water. Let me not put figures in at the moment, but it's a, it's, it's a lot of water. Um, so, I mean, because I, I, it's the growing of the cotton, right, that you're not using water. It's the processing of the cotton that you're not using water, and it's the dyeing that's not using water, correct? Right, yeah. 
and then the pollution that would come from dying almost, oh, not inevitably, but without incredibly sophisticated processes to uh, take the dyes out of the water and neutralize them, right? Yeah. So you don't have to do any of that. We don't have to do any of that completely. I think it's important to understand uh, polyester and what goes into recycling polyester, the filaments that go into the air. They're lighter than air. You breathe them in. You hear you hear everyone tell you about plastic and how it's in our body. And polyester is just a byproduct of filaments that just go into the air and they're everywhere. So what intrigues me about this project is uh, my dad is a cotton farmer. So I understand how much water goes into the growing of it and how it works. But on the back side of it, this shirt keeps shirts out of landfills and it water is the most is an unrenewable resource. It doesn't renew itself. So the more we preserve now, the better we have for the future. So I hope this garment growth hacks every brand, every earth fan out there um, because it truly is the best product on the market. And it's not just a short sleeve crew with a bunch of fancy colors. It's literally a collection that you can get behind in this business. Um, it, it's it's your do good, feel good. So I guess the other thing that intrigued me is you've actually made something that's somewhat affordable, right? It's not like a boutique item, right? Very much so. Uh, I'm, I'm actually shocked at uh, taking this to market and at, at, at the price points that they can take it, how competitive it really is. Um, you have to come by the booth to really figure it out, but it is very competitive. Mm -hmm. So do you think you'll inspire others to do the same, or is this like a very difficult process to, uh, to try to figure out? I think it's, it, it's not an impossible process to figure out, but it's going to take everybody some time to figure out. <laughs> um, how about we, some questions? Or anything else you want to say about? I, I want to add one more comment. Uh, so besides the sustainability of the product itself, our packaging, so the carton itself is 100% recycled. We're even moving to the old school gum tape, which is completely recycled. The labels in the garments, the only thing not recycled in our t-shirt is the sewing thread. Um, and that's not produced at this point. Uh, we're moving away from poly bags to paper bags. So we will be plastic free in about six months. So. That is a good thing. <laughs> it makes a big difference when you can present recycled paper with recycled uh, hang tags with recycled fabric mm -hmm. it's it's just i haven't seen it it's a little off subject but did, i don't know if you saw it at sgia there was a company making uh bags out of uh, wheat chaff it's pretty interesting technology and they're not there for general production but it, it's it's coming mm -hmm. like to use yeah. uh, things that would otherwise be thrown yeah. out yeah. and to less plastic is a good thing yeah um all right, let's maybe have some questions. All right, you know what? Let's give up one mic. Here. If you... Sure. All right. I always sound like I feel weird on mic, but we'll see. Um, is there a you song? are weird. That's, yeah. that's yeah. A, it's all right, though. Yeah. It's really all right. Uh, all right, eat the mics. Speak up. Is, is there a certain percentage of the fiber that gets... Uh, deemed unusable in the re-spinning uh, process, like a certain amount that's no longer durable enough to be re-spun? They make that into toilet paper. <laughs> no, I don't know. What do you do? Is there something that can't be used? So, so what happens is the entire fiber that's uh, recycled is, is split up into different portions. So every portion of the fiber is used in specific quantums to blend with specific colors in specific proportions. So the wastage is bare minimum. Got it. And then when you're taking in these fabric scraps, are you, you're removing the, the decoration, you're cutting that out and then using the raw There is a sorting fabric. process. Sorting process, yes. yeah. Do you, do you have an idea of like what percentage of an average t-shirt is actually then being recycled, if that makes sense? Because there's some wastage, some taking out the garment or it's, print or the decoration, I mean. Yeah, the t-shirts that are thrown in by the time it's processed and sorted and segregated, you can't measure. There's no way to know right. if it's yeah. cutting waste or t-shirts. I think down the road they'll be quantifying that, but right now it's impossible yeah. to tell. It's a difficult cool. process For sure. to quantify, yeah. I figured. Smaller prints, right? Smaller prints. Yes. <laughs> All right. Do we have other questions? 
Yeah, or any of the any types of prints still able to be go into the scraps, or it has to be no print in the area. Like if it was a water-based print that was on the shirt, can you just use it? Honestly speaking, we have been uh, recycling everything that comes our way. Mm -hmm with print, with embroidery, with, with everything that's on the garment, right. it's sorted out and it's recycled. Mm. Wow. So that includes shirts, that's woven shirts, knitted t-shirts. Non-woven. Non-wovens. Everything's recycled. You end up with a lot of buttons at the end of the top bottom of the tank? Oh, the, the buttons are pulled out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even these buttons are global certified. So. Oh, wow. Um, so, other questions? Where do you source the materials that you're recycling? Where do they source the material? Yeah. Most of the cut waste comes from India, comes from Bangladesh. Uh, the used clothes comes from all over the world, mostly from the United States. No China scraps, though. No China scraps. Which is an important point. So. Yeah. Um, which is kind of a good approach. Like, I know that when clothing is donated otherwise, it really disrupts the economy. Like I know a lot of countries in um, the Horn of Africa, for example, do not accept used clothing anymore because it was disrupting their local economies yeah. and they don't want it anymore. And so this seems like a different approach that, you know, sell it back as a shirt is different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the one thing I'd want to impress on you as a printer, you carry the eco-friendly theme with water base discharge inks. Um, pretty easy just to carry the eco-friendly theme through it. So um, we've done all the testing on the garments. We know what they will achieve in color, which is really important as a printer. Um, and the palettes are very consistent. So you're going to get a consistent color every time you do it which is really important if you're gonna discharge. Some of the brands you can buy out there don't have that consistent color of cotton as it's sourced. So these actually give us a really predictable canvas, one that you know how it washes, prints, wears, shrinks, everything. All right, uh, any other questions? Could you speak to the sorting process a little bit? If you're throwing woven goods, knit goods, things with buttons, things with uh, woven labels, those kind of things into a recycling, is that all done by hand? Or is there a mechanical means, a chemical means? Or could you speak to how it's this sorting? Sure. So the first process of sorting is the color sorting. All, all, the, all the textile fabric or, or apparel or trims are completely sorted by color, and the sorting process is manual. Okay. The second, the second process is all the accessories like buttons, zippers, are removed from the, from the garments, kept aside. And then the garments are chopped up into these small bits, and then processed ahead into fiber. So the sorting process is manual. Not to be done in the United States, probably. <laughs> it's too expensive. Yeah. So why did you do this? What are you, nuts? Like, this sounds like a lot of work. Like, what was your motivation, you know? You know, this, this, this has something to do with me personally because, you know, you know we, have, we have been growing up with so much waste. You know, when, when I've grown up, you know, we, we, we didn't see pet bottles being thrown around. We, we are used to glass bottles. There's waste, there's waste accumulation that happens everywhere. And someone needs to do something about it. So I said, why not start recycling some waste and make something out of it? So waste to some fashion colors, do some sorting and do some, something different. So it started from there. So I started recycling about seven years ago. And we started selling certain quantum of recycled goods into the market as a trial. We started streamlining the process, getting the colors right, and hence the line of product that we have today at Fairweather Johnson. So it's been 
a process which is not very simple. It's taken me a good amount of time. And ha it has been challenging as well. But it's not impossible. And I think it could clean up the planet someday. Not, not too far from now, but if everybody starts using recycled clothing or reused clothing or Fairweather Johnson as a brand, we could start cleaning up the planet. So uh, do you have, I don't know, it kind of doesn't fit with the normal models. Are you able to get certified from like different, you know, fair trade or GOT certification, that, those type of like certifications that people get? Yeah, we are global uh, recycle standard certified. All right, any other questions? All right. Mr. Sukahara. <laughs> Thank you. You had mentioned that uh, doing this in the States is too expensive. Can you tell us more about that? Uh, doing the process of manual sorting in the US could be expensive. That's what I meant. It's the manual sorting. Yeah. OK. Thank you. All right. Uh, other questions? All right. They're going to stick around for a few minutes afterwards. Uh, they also have a booth. What's your booth number? 860. If you want to talk to them more about it. I hope you're inspired on your, you know, this is what they do, and now they've figured out a way to do it more sustainably. I hope all of you will go back to whatever you do and figure out how to do it more sustainably, and then together maybe we can make things a little better than they are. Um, how about a round of applause for these three guys? Thank you so much.